Hello everyone! First of all, I want to give you a huge thank you to everyone who watched my last video and to all of my new subscribers. I was not expecting to be watched by so many people and I was overwhelmed by your positive feedback. And you had a lot of questions too, all of which I have read and now I wish to answer some of them in this new video where I will go over how to build a strike starter deck in detail so you will be able to put a meta deck together with no real money needed and without dismantling a single one of your cards. The deck will be a meta contender and even with the version you'll have, you'll be able to compete with the current ranked decks. I already got the Platinum 5 just playing strike starters and I have a really high win rate as you can see here out of 25 duels I played, I won 23 of them just by playing strike starters and that got me to Platinum 5 already. The deck I will show you today is not the current version that I'm doing, which is the Mark IV one, so it's the fourth iteration of the deck, it's the third time I changed it ever since I made it. But today I will go over the Mark I, which is the first version of the deck that I made, easiest one to make, and hopefully you should be able to make it easily too. So the first card in the set is Ash Blossom, and you can get this card by buying the Ash Blossom bundle. So you should have a first root hand trap to begin with. Then you need to be opening uh, many and many packs of the uh, single strike or so. And I'll talk about how to unlock that in a little bit. But basically to make this deck you will need to open a lot of packs from this set and that's how I made it where I basically spent all my gems on that pack and nowhere else. Which I thought was the, the best investment to make as as a free to play you have a limited amount of gems but you still do start with a ton of gems and th this is where I chose to spend my gems. So let's say that you spend it in a way that you got one of every SR or a bow but no multiples so everything is at one if it's an SR and you should hopefully have three of all the rares as rares are not only pretty easy to come but also not very hard to craft either. So I was able to have all the rares and even craft some more rares by the time I made my first starter deck because I played a lot of solo as well before going into ranked. So this has the assumption that you should already have all the rares or at least access to be able to make all these and with that let's go over by card by card. So here we have Strycerter Ace Ray which is the main monster of the deck. Basically she has a lot of different match suits with different abilities each. So she can head out and go into one of her match suits and when of her match suits uh, perishes she can come back from the graveyard and then head out again. And basically both of these effects are once per turn so you can keep going through a different match every turn and you can also link summon from one mech onto the another as well. This should be easier to understand once we are in the game, which I will be doing after the deck list. Then we have Strike Stry Starter Ace Rose. This is basically a, another counterpart of Ray. She can also go into any of the link monsters, but she has a different crit effect where you can summon her from your hand when you summon a Strike Starter card. And also, if an opponent's monster in the extra monster zone uh, leaves the field, then she can special summon herself from the graveyard. She's not as good as Ray, but still very important to have three of, since it allows you another way to access your link monsters. Then we have Raidechi, uh, Monster Reborn and Reinforcements of the Army. These are cards that you can obtain just by doing the solo mode. So these are really powerful cards that you can use almost in any deck. Well, Reinforcements not mean needs to be in a warrior deck, but luckily Ray and Rose are both monsters. Or warriors, Monster Reborn and Rider Team are also a uh, great card. So these three are, they are URs, but they are free URs that you can make. As you can see, I can't even dismantle them. Just just showing you that they, I got them for free, essentially. So the heart and soul of the deck are one Engage, one Tadari, and one Chizitu. These are the three high rarity cards that you will need to have at least one of. Obviously two engage would be amazing and three Shizitu would be great as well. 
But if you have at least one of each, you should be able to make the deck, even if you're missing some of the rares and normals or anything. You will obviously have to have Ray, and Rose just gives you another Ray, but basically, if you can get a Ray on the field, then you'll be able to just go into Shizuku, get Engage, and then search this uh, Hercules base, funny enough, but I'll show that combo later. And then when you go into Tadari, you can get Engage back. And then you can, uh, when you used up both Tadari and Shizuku using Hercules base, you might be able to get Tadari and Shizuku back and do the combo all over again. I'll talk more about that in detail, but basically, to be able to compete with the meta, you need one Engage, one Tradari, and one Shizitru minimum. So, let's keep that in mind. Afterburners is a really good spell which destroys one monsters on the field. And actually, I should probably talk about how the Star Setter spells work. Because, uh, basically, they both have two abilities. First ability, you can only activate if you control no monsters in your main monster zone. Star Setter usually does this by having only one monster on the field which are the link monsters, which will be in the extra monster zone. So that way you can activate these uh, strike starter spells. After burners destroys targets one face up monsters and destroys it, then you can activate the second effect if you have three or more spells in the graveyard, which allows you to destroy one spell and trap on the field. This is how this all strike starter spells work, where the gem in waves is the opposite. If you control no monsters in the main monster zone, first effect, target one set spell and trap and destroy it. And if you have two or more spells in the graveyard, you can destroy one monster on the field. So, this targets monsters and then destroys spells or traps if you have three spells in the grave. This targets a set spells and traps and destroys one monster if you have three spells in the grave. The Vector Blast. Now, uh, this card is a little interesting in collusion. It's good to have at least one uh, at the start of your deck, but uh, as you improve more in the game, this this is one of the tries that you might be you want want to cut. So it is great because when you activate it, both players send top two tries from their deck to the graveyard. And since most of your deck are spells, there's a good chance that you'll be sending two more spells to the graveyard and just have three spells in the grave just by that. And that allows you to activate the second effect of all your other spells, which is why I'm playing this card to be able to fuel your graveyard. Also. Funnier effect is the second effect, where if you have three or more spells, you can shuffle all your opponent's monsters from the extra monster zones into the deck, which is a great way to remove your opponent's lich monsters, and sometimes really catches them off guard. I have one scissor cross here, which allows you to add a strike strike race monster from your graveyard to hand, such as Ray or Rose. So you, you usually do want one Ray in the graveyard and possibly even one rose in the graveyard to be able to make or combat every turn. However, there might be some time where you won't have access to Ray or a rose. This spell can get them back to you. This is also something that you might want to cut. Lightning Storm is also obtainable through the bundle, so you don't have to craft this or anything. And it's just a really good card. You have to have no face up cards to activate. So, it does restrict you on there, but it's a great combat card, because it either allows you to destroy all the attack position monsters your opponent controls, or say all spells and traps your opponent controls. Both these effects are crazy. And since it's a spell, I figured I'd play one. Also, well, once we're at it, I will say that I'm not playing Judgment in this deck, since I just wanted to fill it up with spells. You could get the Judgment bundle and play it if you wanted to, instead of some of the weaker extractor cards here such as Eagle Boosters, the Vector Blast, or the Scissor Thrust. I do like having more spells in that, so this is the way I'm going with it at the moment. Now, the Hyrtle's base is actually a very underrated card. If you play TCG, you might think this card is terrible, and you're not necessarily wrong, but this card has a really good use, which is that if it's sent from field to the graveyard, you can target up to three strategy cards in your grave, and shuffle them into the deck. Now, since you will only have one Tadari, one Shizitru, this card basically allows you to recycle them infinitely. And this is the combo that I've been talking about, and I will show you how it works in the game. But basically, this is this card is what allows you to just use your high rated targets every turn and just be able to have many resources and combat the meta. Then we have the field spell, Area Zero. Basically, you can target one other card you control and excavate the top two tiles of your deck. And if you find a strike starter, 
you can send the targeted card to the graveyard and add the card you found to your hand. This card is really good because you usually use it to send the Hercules space to the graveyard. There are other ways to send it to the graveyard, but this also allows you to draw a card on top of it. So it's a good way to send it to the graveyard, and it's really good to have this field spell. Also, if this field spell is sent to the graveyard, you can summon a Strysetter Ace Monster from your deck, which can be destroyed by your opponent to be triggered, but also you can destroy it yourself to trigger it. So if you just can't find a way, but if you do have an area zero, You'll just have to destroy your own area zero to get away from your deck. Speaking of ways to destroy area zero, here is a uh, multi roll. So, this allows you to send one other card you control to the graveyard, and then your opponent can't respond to your spell activations for the rest of the turn. Which is a good way to send the area zero to the graveyard, or even Hercules base to the graveyard, and you can get their graveyard effects by this, and also, also stop your opponent from responding to your spells. Furthermore, is that you can set Strysector spells with different names to do from your graveyard at the end of the turn. Up to the number of Strysector spell cards you activated this turn while this card was face up on the field. But they are banished when they leave the field. So this allows you to recycle your used resources and be able to use them again next turn. Do be careful that they will get banished once they are out of the field if you set it with this effect. So you usually don't want to send something like set engage there because you only have one of it unless you really have to use the one your engage but you won't be able to get it back if you use it at this effect. So it's usually good to get cards such as the afterburners since you can basically use to destroy more monsters and since you have to go off it even if you lose one of them after you use it it's not a big deal. Before I go to these I want to finish the strike sector cards first. So, the uh, Hornet Thrones and Widow Enter are great super rares to have, but they are both not necessary. So, if you open the pack and got the Engage, Kadari and Shizuku, but you don't have Hornet Thrones or Widow Enter yet, don't worry, you can still make the deck without these two cards, but it's good to have them. And since we are going with the assumption that you have one of each, I did include one of each in this deck. So, Hornet Thrones is basically a ray in a spell card, where it summons a Strysetter Ace token, and you can use this Strysetter Ace token to go into one of your linked monsters. And then Widow Enter negates the effects of one monster uh, on the field, which is really good. And if you have three or more spells in grave, you take control of that monster until the end phase, which is even more crazy. You can just steal your opponent's boss monster with it, and then use it as however you like. Then. We have Eagle Booster here. Eagle Booster is usually a good card, but sometimes it just doesn't do anything. So I did cut it to two, and you should even cut it down to one if you want to. You target one face up monster on the field and it's unaffected by card effects this turn except its own. So basically, if your opponent is threatening to destroy one of your link monsters and you don't want it to be destroyed, you can chain Eagle Booster to protect it. If you have three or more spells in graveyard, it also can't be destroyed by battle either. So basically, if you have two or more spells in the wave, it just becomes Im almost impossible to remove one of your link monsters from the field until the end of the turn. So it's a great protection card, but it only works reactively when your opponent is trying to destroy it. You can put it up to three, you can cut it down to one. It's uh, a situational card for sure. And then Shark Cannon for the last, where you target one monster in your opponent's graveyard and banish it. But if you have three or more spells in jail, you can also special summon it to your field, but it cannot attack. So this is basically just three more copies of Monster Reborn, but they're also a quick play spell. Now, the monster you summon cannot attack, but it still has its effects, and you can also use them as link material to go into your link monsters. And now I'll go into the extra deck to tell you about those. So first the Strike Striker ones, the one Tradari and one Shizuku that you need. And then since they are rares, I assume you have three Hayate and three China. Uh, you don't need three of each, but it's good to have as much as possible. So you'll be able to have more options when using Ray. Uh, they are all once per turn each. So you can only summon them once per turn. And they all have different effects. So China, when it's summoned, target one face up monster your opponent controls. It cannot attack until the end of your opponent's turn. And also, every time you activate a Strysetter spell or its effect, gain 100 life points after it. Kainu is usually one of the worst ones, 
but it can stop your opponents from attacking so it can be really good in that sense also the few life points might matter if you are on a real low life points and you might just live another turn by this affair Hayate is a really good one to get spells in Ray where he can attack your opponent directly and if she does battle after the battle you can send one strike starter card from your deck to the graveyard. You usually want to send spells in the grave so that uh, you can have more spells in grave to fit the uh, three spell condition. But there are also a few other things you can do where you can send a ray to the graveyard if you don't already have one in grave so that when your link monster gets destroyed you can draw back to ray. Or a third option is to send something like engage to the graveyard, a strong card, so that you can go into Kragari and get it back. Oh, what does Kragari do? When she's special summoned, you target one strike strike spell in your graveyard and add it to your hand. This is a really strong card just because of the fact that it can get engaged bad, which draws your card. And then if you have three or more spells, it draws an, an additional card basically. So this is, now that I think about it, maybe I forgot to talk about engage, but this is basically the pot of greed for the deck. It just searches a strike strike spell and then draws you an additional card. And you can just get it back infinitely with Tratari if you loop the Tadari back with Hercules base. And finally Shizuku, which is also really important, where your opponent monster lose 100 attack and defense for its spell in your graveyard, and in the end phase, if she was special summoned this turn, you can add one strike sector spell from your deck to your hand with a different name from the tries in your graveyard. So if you have not found the engage yet, you can search the engage with Shizuku. And this is usually what you do at the end of your first turn, where you'd end up in Shizuku and Search Engage. For the other cards in the main deck that I want to talk about are the three Forbidden Chalice, which are cards that you should generate, I suggest. Because since it's a rare, I was able to generate them with the uh, crafting points I had. And I'm hoping that you all have enough rare craft point, crafting points to be able to craft this. If not, any other good spell will do, but this is one of the better spells at the rare slot. Because it, it targets an opponent's monster and negates its effects, but they also gain 400 attack. You can also target your own monsters, but you usually use it to negate your, the effects of your opponent's monsters. And it's just more copies of Widow Venture, in a way. And you can just activate them any, any time as well, instead of having conditions such as the Strike Sector spells. So this card is really good and it's one of the best rares in the game for sure. Then I also have two MSD here to remove more spells and traps from the opponent. This also can be changed or and you can even put something like two Twisters in, instead if you pulled it from the packs. But since I didn't and I had crafting points for rares, I had crafted some mystical space typhoons. Because while the Gemming Waves does destroy spells and traps as well, it only targets sets. And after Maneuver has to destroy a face-up monster to be able to destroy the spells and trap. So sometimes you just want to destroy a face-up spell and trap without destroying anything else. In which case the Mystical Space Typhoon can come up. Finally, the other tiles in the extra deck are all tiles that are received for free. Oh, except for Zeke, which is a Link 2 Strike Sighter card, I almost forgot. Now, uh, when this card is Link Summoned, you can target one face-up monster on the field and banish it until the end of your opponent's next phase. Now, important note here, don't banish Zeke by your own effect. I've seen people do this accidentally, where when your opponent has no monsters, they summon Zeke and then click the activator on own effect and then they have to banish Zeke herself if it's the only monster on the field. So, just know that when you summon it, only use her effect if you want to and if you can banish an opponent's monster. Then the second effect is target one other card you control, this card gains 1000 attack, then send the target a card to the graveyard. So this allows you to send some of your cards, slight area zero, light artillery base to the graveyard, and also to use it more attack. This card is great because you can make it with a strike starter monster and any other monster. So if you stole an opponent's monster with Widow Winter and you have a strike starter monster on the field, you can just go Zeke with it and then your opponent will not be able to get back the card that you stole from them with Widow Winter. Every other card in that are default cards that I did not craft. So Trachy Trachy Dreden is in the starter deck of the game and it's a 
made from two level four monsters, which you can make it with Ray and Rose if you wanted to. So it's an option. Then I have a lot of cards uh, for Lynch and I got them from the Lynch starter deck. So when starting the game, you're given three options with Fusion, Synchro and Lynch. And I have chosen the Lynch one, which allowed me to have more extra monsters in my extra deck. If you did not choose the Lynch one, don't worry. These are not necessary for the deck, but it's good to have a strong Lynch 3 and a strong Lynch 4 if you do want to go into them. But there are also alternatives at lower rarities that you can use in place of this. Now we will be playing some practice games to show you how this deck works in an actual duel. And then I'll show you some of the combo lines in more detail, which may come up in your games, so you'll be able to do them as well. And then we'll finish off by talking about how you could improve this deck further. So to start, I'll show you a gameplay against the story deck that I just played against. And I think it was a good example of how to play the deck. So let's start by reviewing that game. Okay. Let's see. This hand might be difficult. Okay, we found a rose. That's good enough. We'll add the rose. Then summon the rose. And then we can go into Hayate. Hmm. So let's destroy some of our opponent's monsters while we're at it. This puts two spells in grave. I will want these, so okay. So by crashing into this, I'll activate Hayate. Put a third spell in grave. And then main two. I will go into Shizuku. And I'll set some cards to protect her. And at the end phase, Shizuku will add Engage. It's still a bit worrying, but we made a pretty good board. Okay, that will banish my monster. Um, so, which one did they target? Let's see in the lots. They targeted the Shirenai Spectral Sword. So, I can chain Shark Cannon and Titan their monster. Do I want to steal their monster? No, I want their monsters to be banished. And they also banish my monsters, but they won't be able to summon their tuner, which is what's most important now. Now, with Engage, we want to search for the Hercules base, because we need that to be able to get back the combo. We'll draw one more card, then we can go into Tragari now. Ferrari can get back the engage. And with engage we can get more ties that we can use. Um which one do I want here? Um probably another afterburner, just to clear the board. Afterburner Destroying the opponent's monster. I don't think I can kill them here, so I'm not gonna summon more monsters. I'll just go into battle, 
Hit for 2000. And then what's the main two? I will make Pina. Just so that I can use this area zero to get rid of my own Hercules base. And with it, get a card, get Hercules base to the graveyard. Kinda gives me life points. Hercules base allows me to cycle Tadragi, Shizutu, and the first Hayata I used back into my deck. And then I'll just be able to use them again next turn. So this is the infinite um, resource cycle that I've been talking about. Okay, we have Raideti, which is a little bit top deck. I think we can just finish this game, so we'll start with Raideti. We'll activate the effect, that's fine. Now, let's see what, we, what is the best way to chill them. So, we can summon a lot of monsters on our board here, but we can't activate the uh, Strike Sector spells once we use them. So, uh, to first, uh, I will start by activating my field spell. Get rid of my MSD just to see if I can find any more cards. Okay, I'll take the Hercules base, but this is not necessarily what I wanted. But it will allow us to come back once again if something happens to Hercules base. Now, um, with no more cards, I will start with Shark Cannon, stealing one of their monsters so I can use them as a material. Then I will normal summon Ray and I'll activate Rose. Also normal summon Rose. Then using two monsters I will go into Zeech using their monster and China. I won't activate the Zeech's effect because she will banish one of my cards. So that's a no. Then activate Zeech. Targeting the field spell. The Ishida is a 1000 attack field spell that goes to graveyard, so I can activate the field spell and get another strike starter from my deck to my field. And with that, um, that should be more than game. And I think just to ensure the damage, I'll make another Tadari here. And with Tadari, I'll get engaged back. If things go absolutely south, we can always come back using the engage. Okay, I think that's about the combo. So, from there we just go into battle and finish the game. Now, I will show you quickly a few highlights from that game and from the other two games that I played, just to show you the main combo lines. Now, with Engage, we want to search for the Hercules base, because we need that to be able to get back the combo. We'll draw one more card. Then we can go into Tadari now. Tadari can get back the engage. And with engage we can get more ties that we can use. Um, which one do I want here? Um, probably another afterburner, just to clear the board. Afterburner, destroying the opponent's monster. 
I don't think I can kill them here, so I'm not gonna summon more monsters. I'll just turn to battle. Hit for 2000. And then go to main 2. I will make... Paina. Just so that I can use this area 0 to get rid of my own Hercules base. And with it, get a card, get Hercules base at the graveyard. Kinda gives me life points. Hercules base allows me to cycle Tadragi, Shizuku, and the first Hayata I used back into my deck. And then I'll just be able to use them again next turn. So this is the infinite um, resource cycle that I've been talking about. Now, um, with no more cards, I will start with Shark Cannon. Stealing one of their monsters. So I can use them as a material. Then I will normal summon Ray. And I'll activate Rose. Also normal summon rose. Then, using two monsters, I will go into Zeech using their monster and China. I won't activate the Zeech's effect because she will banish one of my cards, so that's a no. Then activate Zeech, targeting the field spell. The she gains a 1000 attack field spell goes to graveyard, so I can activate the field spell. And get another Strike Stretcher from my deck to my field. And with that, um, that should be more than game. And I think just to ensure the damage, I'll make another Tadari here. And with Tadari, I'll get Engage back. If things go absolutely south, we can always come back using the Engage. Okay, I think that's about the combo. So, from there we just go into battle and finish the game. Activate Widow Enter to steal the opponent's monster, and then I will chain Shark Cannon to once again steal an opponent's monster, but this time from the graveyard. And then we'll just have so many monsters on our field after this. Because then we can normal summon a uh, set MSD, use area space 0, start the MSD. We will add Rose to our hands. And then activate it. Destroy area space 0, activate the area zero's effect to summon another ray from that. Then activate the rose's effect from hand to summon a ray out of the field. So this is basically how you can kill the opponent if they were at low life points. So if you do have the link uh, start the deck, this is what you would do. Where first you would make the Dia Saber by using three monsters. So we'll use the Mobius, the Fraud, and the Tradari here. Not that I have to, but I just want to show how this works. So I'll summon the Dia Saber using these three materials. And then, using one more material and the Dia Saber, I can make Rastalider. So I'll use one Ray and one Dia Saber. I'll treat it as three materials, since it's a Link Tree monster. So three materials and one material makes four materials, so I can summon a link four, which is Rastalider. Now, we can activate its effect, target a um, link monster in either graveyard and gain its attack points. So we, it will become 4600, and this would be the combo to destroy the high attack monsters that your opponent has. And then you can just attack the opponent to finish them off. So we're back with the deck, and I played about 3 games there and I just wanted to show you the most optimal ones and I hope that 
it have been helpful and now that you know how to play the set a little better. If it's not enough, I don't mind uh, uploading more of gameplay footage so you can know how to play. And I can also do more commentary if the commentary that you saw wasn't enough. It's just that when I tried to do commentary, I also happened to play worse. So uh, one of the matches that I played the best turned out to be the one of the matches that I didn't speed so much. Either way, I think this set uh, does really well. I mean, against story mode, this can win any matches easily. And even in ranked, I think this deck has a lot of potential to compete the higher rank meta decks. If you would like to improve this deck further, there are a lot of cards that you can put in, such as the hand traps, such as Ash Blossom, Effect Wailer, and Match C, obviously. And uh, once you have Veiler in there, you can also add the Access Code line as, a, as your boss monster. Harpy's Feather Duster is a great card. Pot of Prosperity is something that you can play. Kaiser Colosseum and There Can Be Only One are annoying, but they also work really well. And something like an, another hand trap like an Imperm could work. In tomorrow's video, I will probably make a version that um, showing my meta version of the deck, which is this deck but probably by tomorrow i'll improve it even further add more hand traps and just see what, what where i can take this i already got the plat so you'll probably see some ranked gameplay tomorrow in plat and see if we can get to higher ranks and this is the video so let me know if you need more uh, gameplay and i'll record more and show you how to play a, in a longer video. I just didn't want to make this video too long so it could be, because it would be too boring. But if you just want to see a raw gameplay food video just teaching you how to play in more and more detail with many and many examples, do tell me if you need something like that. I just I don't know if a very long video is something that you would want to watch. Um, other than that, I want to once again thank you for the huge support that I saw yesterday. And I'm hoping that I'm able to provide you with a video that is satisfactory. And if you do enjoy it, I'm really appreciating all the subscribers that I'm getting. As just a few days ago, I would think that it would take me another three to five years to get to a thousand subscribers. But I just woke up this morning and I already had like more than double my subscribers. So uh, now. 1000 doesn't seem impossible anymore and maybe by the end of the year it might be a number that I'm able to reach so I'm I'm really hoping that uh, I'll be able to get there and I hope that my videos are in a quality that you will be satisfied overall um, thanks for watching and I will see you tomorrow in another strike starter video Also, uh, someone asked me for a death code in the last video. Where, where is the death code again?